sir. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, very much. Excuse me for getting situated here. You know, when I was um, coming in today and driving in uh, towards the venue, um, it occurred to me that um, we do a lot of recognizing and applauding, and we should do that. But I don't remember very many times when we have acknowledged the fantastic and consistent leadership of Matt Morrow. Can we do that right now? Thank you so much for that. Uh, and I always count it a privilege to address Good Morning Springfield once a year, um, to provide the state of the county to basically the movers and the shakers of the uh, business community in this room, as well as education and government, etc. And I'd like to recognize a few people here today that's part of the uh, Green County uh, family. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize them. Would you all stand and we will recognize them collectively when I'm finished here. Please stand, uh, Harold Bench. I've not seen Lincoln, but I'm pretty sure he's here with Lincoln and uh, Harold, please, there he is. Uh, please stand up. Also want to acknowledge the department directors, office holders, and employees that are here today. And thank you for your support. Also want to thank Donna Barton, our public information officer. Uh, she does a great job in presenting in representing the county in a very positive way and I need to give her some credit for helping me with the presentation today. Would you please acknowledge your appreciation of these public servants? Thank you. <laughs> I want to start off with our mission statement. Uh, this uh, pretty much says everything that we do, guides everything that we do, provide all citizens, citizens of Greene County, including those in our cities, a safe and thriving community through excellent customer service, unparalleled dedication, and the efficient use of taxpayer dollars. And we, this is not just something that we think about or we, we hang on a wall somewhere and we don't pay attention to, we think about this. Our motto, Green County Works, the reason we added the dot, 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 because Green Green County works well. Green County works for you. Green County works hard, okay? And I wanted to share those with you. Uh, this time last year, I came before you to make the case of the county's financial needs. Um, this year, I have a much different story to tell you. And my goal this morning is to paint a picture for you of Green County past and Green County future. Um, Many of you who know me know that I love to watch sports and I spend a lot of time traveling uh, around this state and other states cheering on grandsons. I have one grandson, Wyatt, that uh, uh, plays baseball all over the place. And then uh, uh, Aiden plays soccer. And we spend a lot of time chasing after them. Now, you're thinking, boy, this is really a shameless plug for your grandparents, okay? How many great or grandkids? How many grandparents do we have out there, okay? You would do the same thing if you were me, okay? Look at those cute little guys, Wyatt and Aiden, okay? Um, it was during a recent game that I was watching Wyatt play, Rogers, Arkansas, Kansas City, somewhere. And um, it was during a recent game where I began to think how Greene County uh, last year has a lot in common this past year has a lot in common with sports. In sports, there are wins and there are losses. There are uncontrollable factors such as injuries, sometimes the weather, and community support for sports teams and the county is vital to team morale. And while the uh, performance of each player is followed and measured by everybody, success is ultimately a team effort. And county government is a team sport. All of these elements hold true for Greene County as well. And so this last year, we had some ups and downs, things we ultimately couldn't control, but also we had a lot of hard work by Greene County employees, department directors, and office holders. And so there is no doubt that the successes we have had since the last State of the County address last October, uh, that presentation, are a result of the entire Greene County team. And I wanna make that point the entire Greene County team. And I am excited to take this time here today to highlight and even maybe celebrate the teamwork and those successes. And let me be clear, our successes uh, speak for themselves, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about them anyway. 
Um, but I also think it's important to give the past, uh, the past year some context. And not to belabor, belabor my sports analogy, but not too long ago, if you had put Green County statistics on a baseball trading card, it would have shown some real telling and challenging numbers. No question about that. For example, we had out of control jail population. Everybody in this room knows that. Which prevented our police officers from making criminals accountable for what they do. We had important services that had to be cut several years ago just because of lack of funding. Many Greene County departments were seriously underfunded, which adversely impacted the quality of services that we could provide you, our customers. And the, final, the financial support uh, was lacking for us to be able to help some of our uh, Greene County municipalities. And so there's, there's a lot of different examples of some of the issues that we had. Uh, for, for, for example, again, uh, for many years, we had difficulty in attracting and retaining good employees due to very seriously low wages. We had IT positions sometimes that we could not even get anybody to apply for because of the low wages. And then many times when they apply for the job and we do the interview, when they find out what the salary is, they say we're not interested. And so, that, so those of you who manage businesses, you know how difficult that is to attract and then when you get them, retain good employees. Um, former Los Angeles Dodger coach, Tommy Lasorda once said, there are three types of baseball players. Those who make it happen, those who watch it happen, and those who wonder what happened. And you probably have all three of those in your organization, but we simply couldn't sit on the bench and watch any longer. We had to do something to make it happen. We had to lead. So we approached these long list of county needs with a philosophy that was mentioned during the chamber leadership visit in Greenville, South Carolina. Now I'll tell you what, I gleaned a lot. I went to two of these visits in Alabama and South Carolina, and I always gleaned so much um, uh, inspiration from those trips. And so one of the city's leaders defined one of their unique attributes as a collective sense of possibility. Now think about that. These are people who get things done. And so it is my desire as presiding commissioner to maintain a sense of possibility in our county, but not just in our organization, but collectively and in partnership with the business community, with the city of Springfield, with the municipalities throughout Greene County, with our education organizations, which are non with our nonprofit organizations. And so this meant going to work to draft a resolution for a tax increase that um, was not all that popular at the very beginning, but, this, but we, we really needed additional revenue to fund the much needed services. And so this would generate um, a new tax. This would be the first general revenue sales tax increase since 1984. You probably remember us making that case. You're wondering why does he have a hamburger on this? <laughs> on this slide. The reason is, and we use this analogy also, is because a one half percent sales tax increase, if you were to buy a four dollar hamburger, that means you're paying two extra pennies for that. Not much, okay? And so in, in November 2017, voters understand, understood the needs as we presented them, and they agreed with us that we needed more revenue. And so 60% of you uh, approved the one half of 1% sales tax that would generate about, depending on the, the, the economy of course, would generate about $25.5 million per year. Now, getting the tax passed was no small feat, especially in Greene County. And we came across some obstacles and some opposition that we did not even expect. And there has been a great deal reported in the media on this issue, but ultimately, what, all we were trying to do, we were just trying to do the right thing for you, our citizens, for you, our customers.
And that takes me to an advertisement that I recently saw while watching the Seattle Seahawks demolish the Dallas Cowboys a couple weeks ago. Any Cowboys fans in the room that will admit to it? Okay, all right. Um, and in the stadium, I saw a quote on a far wall. You're not gonna be able to see it very much here, but if you go all the way to the right of the screen, that big white splotch, that wall, what that says is, is a slogan. It says, dream fearlessly. I started thinking about that. As I got a closer look during that game, uh, I actually found out that it was an advertisement for American Family Insurance Company. <laughs> but I still liked it, okay? It, it caught my attention. Dream fearlessly. And that's appropriate here. And appropriate then when we had to um, go to you, our customers, for a tax increase. But real leadership, folks, entails dreaming. Dreaming of what could be, even in light of some huge obstacles. I think some of the, some of the quotes I'm going to share with you today, you can apply them to your business and the way we all operate our business. Dream fearlessly. Prior to and subsequent to the approval of the tax, we experienced an onslaught of criticisms and a variety of complaints from those whose political and philosophical ways of solving problems is to do nothing. Um, we didn't have that choice. We could not just do nothing. And so with that said, and all the successes that we've had, I will highlight in a moment, I don't want to gloss over a very important piece of Greene County story this past year. There's been a great deal printed in the media and reported about the county for months. And as presiding commissioner, I want to be very careful that uh, this doesn't cloud the bigger story that the, that the county has to tell. And I'm getting ready to tell you that story here in just a few minutes. And so um, despite some of the issues that we experienced over the last year or so, the commission and the entire Greene County team has worked very, very hard to move the county forward. So here is the good news, the real news, as opposed to, I won't say it, fake news, okay, real news, the successes that the team and the community can share in, okay? Don't forget, everything we do is all about you. It's not about us. So here's some of the great positive things. There's more than I can put on this list. But first of all, Jennifer Wilson and her colleagues at Inform Architecture and Trainer HL, we selected them as the architects for the, to build the jail expansion uh, back in April. And I'll tell you what, these two companies banding together, uh, they know a lot about building jails because they've done it all over the country, okay? The tax oversight committee that we formed in order to watch us, how we spend the tax money, um, the commission established that, we appointed them, they, their first meeting was in May, and then of course the demolition begins on Boone County or Boone, Booneville Avenue, and um, where you see the vacant lot, that's where the jail is going to sit, pretty much across from the historic courthouse and the current jail. Uh, animal control, you may think that that's not a big deal, but if you lived in, out in the county, animal control is a big deal. Okay, we haven't had it for many, many, many years. Uh, we were able to uh, reinstate that in the, in the urban service boundary area in July. And then Greene County receives a clean, unmodified audit recently from KPM CPAs and advisors. I'm gonna mention that again here in just a few minutes because that's very important. Uh, we signed a contract with, to approve uh, J.E. Dunn and DeWitt and Associates for construction manager at risk. They are gonna build the jail. And I'll tell you what, these two companies, they teamed up and came together to us to uh, put in their bids. And you talk about experience. I think some of them are probably here today. Uh, you talk about experience in doing what we all need them to do. It's unbelievable. And what a great choice we were able to make on that. The bond sale agreement was signed uh, in, on September 4th. And then the Family Justice Center ribbon cutting was just last Monday. And what a fantastic time. This, folks, if you don't know much about this, uh, get on the website, talk to Dan Patterson, Jim Arnott, Paul Williams, those are the three guys that really made this thing happen. And uh, this is a fantastic thing for domestic violence uh, victims 
in, uh, in Greene County. So, sort of a one-stop shop. Instead of a victim of uh, domestic violence having to go different place all over town, all those agencies, the police, the prosecutor, they're right there in the same room in the second floor of the judicial building. Fantastic. Jail design is anticipated to be done um, the first quarter of next year. And funds continue to be distributed to the municipalities. We allotted about $200,000 a year to share with the smaller municipalities out there. They've already had two or three meetings of how they want to uh, share that money with each other. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. And then, of course, we have about $2 million a year allotted to deal with mental health issues that impact the jail population. You know, there's some people that sometimes go to jail that don't need to be in jail. And, and we, we understand that, the sheriff understands that. Now there is much, much more and, uh, a, a, of a list that I could provide as far as the good things, the great things that we were, we're gonna be able to provide you. Um, the bottom line is that none of this would happen had it not been for the passage of the half cent sales tax in November of 2017. So where does Greene County go from here? What lies ahead? Uh, while this is my last year as presiding commissioner, uh, I will leave the Green County very strong, very healthy, and financially supported. Here's proof. And as, as Matt indicated in my uh, uh, introduction, I'm a former criminal justice guy, so I deal with proof, I deal with evidence. If you say something, you gotta prove it. Okay, so here it is. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, KPM CPAs and advisors recently completed the county's annual audit. We've heard the word audit a lot in the last several months. Uh, we get audited every year by KPM CPAs. We get audited every day by Cindy Stein, the county auditor, and her staff. And so again, for many years in a row, we received a perfect audit rating. This is not the first, first time. This is like the 10th time the county has received that. And that is the top result that a county can receive. And how'd that happen? Well, this is a result of sound financial management by the commission, by the department directors, and by our office holders. Don't forget, this is a team sport, folks. You want more proof? Moody's Investor Service awarded the county an AA2 bond rating. A Couple years ago, they came to us and said, hey, we want to take another look at you, and they did. And because of this, and I mentioned this in the last, uh, last month's uh, Good Morning Springfield, because of this, we recently found out that we are gonna be able to save taxpayers $800,000 during the life of those bonds. Now, when I said that last month, People started applauding Matt. I mean, what's, what's the deal here, okay? But anyway, that's a big deal for you. That's a big deal for um, uh, our taxpayers. More proof of, of our fine, our, our, our sound financial standing, Jack's great, Jack Stack's great game of government. It's actually called great game of business, but we are the first, Green County is the first government agency to adopt the great game of business. And what this does, it helps us, and I don't mean the commission, I mean all of our employees, helps us to laser focus on our finances and allow all employees to have a vested interest in saving taxpayers money. And it, I'll tell you what, we do reporting once a month. We know exactly who is on budget, over budget, under budget. And when you know that virtually on a daily basis and you report it every month in front of a group of people, employees, that really helps people be accountable for the money that you give us. Our reserve fund that we have to maintain in case of a 100-year ice storm or a Joplin tornado or something like that, that reserve fund remains very healthy, okay? And of course, we have new revenue with, that you approve the new sales tax. So all of those reasons and even more reasons is, is, is hard evidence that Greene County's finances are in really, really good condition, okay? Now, let me use two words that every audience loves to hear. In conclusion, <laughs> okay, I wanted to be thorough but brief. <laughs> the bottom line is, I'm very proud of Greene County. I'm very proud of the Greene County team. 
And frankly, I have to tell you, I'm proud of my uh, time as presiding commissioner. And I believe Greene County is primed to knock it out of the park, to use additional baseball jargon. In the coming years, we're going to knock it out of the park on what the county is going to be able to do for our citizens. So if you will indulge me, I'd like to use my role as sort of the coach, as it were. Um, during this, my last state of the county address, to pass on to you a couple of things that I gleaned from the chamber visit to Huntsville, Alabama, Matt. And when talking about economic vitality and referring to some of the great things that they had done in Huntsville, one of the speakers said this. He said, always remember this, the sky is not the limit. You remember that? Some of you were there. Some of you were there. I don't know if you remember that, but when he said it, I wrote it down in my phone. So I remembered it. I knew I was going to use that again a couple times. <laughs> okay? The sky is not the limit. Think of what this means. Think of what this means. That we are only limited by our vision. And funding, of course. But I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> we are limited by our vision. And as leaders in business, as leaders in education and in government, everybody who is represented in this room today, what could we accomplish if we truly believed the sky is not the limit? Leadership entails vision. A vision for the future. Well, they had a vision in Huntsville, and those of you who were on that trip, and many of you were, they were getting things done. Another sports reference from Huntsville Chamber trip, one of the speakers said, don't be afraid to punch above your weight. You probably remember that one. I do, I wrote that down as well. In other words, perform at a higher level than one would be expected, punch above your weight. Or to achieve beyond one's ability, punch above your weight. I really like what that says. I really like what that represents. Now, would you allow me one more sports reference? Muhammad Ali once said, champions are not made in the gyms. Champions are made from something they have deep inside them, a desire, a dream, a vision. Ali said that. I believe that, and I try to live my life with those concepts in mind. And I did my best to serve as your presiding commissioner with this idea directing me every day. Desire, a dream, a vision. So the foundation is laid, folks, and the momentum is solid. And I want you to know that when we talk about tax and meetings and oversight board and architects and, and contractors, all of this stuff boils down to one thing, one concept, and that is the security and safety and the economic vitality of you, the residents of Greene County. We never want to lose that focus. That is what it's all about. It's about providing services. It's about when you call the police, they show up in a, in a right amount of time. When somebody burglarizes your house, they're gonna be in jail, okay? The county's gonna be involved in the chamber board and making decisions for economic growth, economic development. That's what this is about when you boil everything down. So as I said, the foundation is laid and the momentum is solid. Needs have been identified. And those needs, folks, they're being met. And here's something I want to leave with you that is very important to me. Promises have been made and promises are being kept by the county and your county team. Promises have been made and promises are being kept. And let me tell you, let me end with this. I am grateful and humbled that you, the citizens of Greene County, allowed me to serve in this position as your presiding commissioner. Some of you who know me, you've heard me say, boy, I love this job. You're thinking, what? You've got to be kidding. No, I love this job. 
there's some challenges, just like your job that you love has challenges. But I want to express my appreciation for you to allow me to have served as your presiding commissioner for the past four years, up until December 31st of this year. And I want to say one thing. Thank you. Matt. Thank you, sir. Thank you.